Hey, what's up? Thank you for watching this tutorial on creating a clean lower thirds. Jesse asked on YouTube how to create this middle lower third bar that pops up on this clean lower thirds that's on videohive.net. So I'm showing it to you here is this next one that pops up right there. And if you're on Video Hive, you can buy it for $13 or you can keep watching this tutorial, learn how to do it, and I actually give you the free project file if you continue watching. So first, let's go over to After Effects and let me show you what I've basically recreated. So it's practically the same exact lower third. Let me turn off this background layer so you can see a little bit better. It's got this text popping up in the middle. It's got a spot for a logo. It's actually really great. So let's go ahead and start recreating this. So I'm going in After Effects, I'm going to create a new composition by cl clicking the composition button. 1920 by 1080 is great. Duration five seconds. Frame rate 2997, that's good. We'll call this lower third center bar. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is with our shape tool, with the rectangle tool selected, we are going to create the basic structure of this lower third. So we have the two bars on either side and the center bar which is sort of a background for the text. So I'll go over to our new composition. I'm going to turn on our grid. So clicking over here and creating, clicking on proportional grid. This will help me make sure that I can center these different shapes and move them where I want. So I'm going to go ahead and set the fill to something like this red, and then I'm just going to create a little bar, something like this, going from about the top to the bottom of these two lines. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then I'm going to use my Move Anchor Point script. You can download this by searching for Move Anchor Point script and downloading the script in Google, and center that. Okay, so now in our shape layer down here, you see that I have a shape layer with a rectangle rectangle inside. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this rectangle two times. One, two. Just by pressing Command D on my keyboard. The top one I'm going to type in, rename left bar. The second one, the middle one, I will call right bar. And the first one I will name background. Okay, so let's move these bars. Let's create a little bit of motion. So for this right bar I'm, and left bar, I'm just going to drop down the position properties, go under transform for both of these, and click p the keyframe next to position. So that little stopwatch next to position, click that for both of them. And right now I'm about at 10 frames with, into my composition. I'm going to go back to frame 0. Actually, I'm going to move these two keyframes to frame 0 and go forward to the 10th frame. And then I'm going to move the left bar over to the left. So we'll go all the way over here to this little line in the grid. And then the right bar, I'm going to move all the way over to this one. Let me just make sure that's the one I want. I'm going to zoom out. And oh, that one's, those ones are a little bit too far. I'm actually going to move them to the bar just to the right and just to the left. So if I scrub back with my timer, we can see that these bars kind of move from the center out. So we have to animate this other bar and the background bar, but first we're going to change the color. So drop down the background, properties, select fill, and change this to, let's just do white to show you what you can do. So it's white now. Now we drop down the transform properties. At the beginning, just set a keyframe for scale and then go to the last keyframe where the left and the right bar go to their last spot. You can press U on your keyboard to bring up all the keyframes at this point and just go over to those next keyframes. Unlock the constrained proportions for the scale property of the background and then basically make it as wide as the bars have moved. So I'm just De increasing the scale, something like that. I'm going to select all of these keyframes on the right, hit F9 on your keyboard to easy ease it, 
and that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we have the basic structure of our background. Okay, so now we want to add the text box that pops up. So just go ahead and take your horizontal text tool and I'm actually gonna make this background black because it's a little bit easier to see. So if I go under my transform, actually press U again, go under the shape layer, contents, background, fill, color, we're gonna choose like a dark gray. And I'm actually going to add the background to this composition so I can see what we're working with. And I'm going to take off this proportional grid. I'm going to lower the opacity of this background just so we can more easily see this text box that we're working with. Okay, so now we add a text box on sort of the right side of this center bar. So with your text tool, just click and drag to create a text box. Something like that will work and then just type in whatever you want. Hi, my name is Phil Ebener. I make videos for videoschoolonline.com. Check out the site for more tutorials and premium courses. Okay, sorry for that shameless plug, but had to do it. Okay, so now with my selection tool I'm just going to move this text box down and over so that there's about the same amount of space whoops on the be above the text box below the text box and to the right of the text box and now we have to make it disappear and appear as this box kind of moves out so we're going to use that do that by using a track mat and adding another shape so with your shape tool selected doesn't matter what color, just make a shape that's about the same size as this box, our text box, or the background box. Um, especially make sure that it goes to the very bottom of the box. So we can zoom in here just to see where it is and just make sure it's lined up with the bottom of the text box. Now, if we go over to the track mat options for my text box, I'm going to rename this text box. From none, we want to select Alpha Mat Shape Layer 2. Or we can rename this to Track Mat Text. Let's track Mat Text. And change this front to Alpha Mat Track Mat Text. So now, if I move the text or the Track Mat Text shape, the text only appears where that shape is. Okay, so now we have to animate the text moving. So press P to bring up position when you have the text box selected. Hit that stopwatch to set a keyframe. Move that keyframe a little bit forward to about 20 frames. And at about 10 frames, move it down. Now we want it to start kind of moving up. And now you can see as it moves up, it appears right within that text box and that shape. First, I'm going to easy ease this, so select both keyframes, press F9 on your keyboard. I'm even going to go into my graph editor, make sure that you are editing the speed graph, select both keyframes, and kind of drag them in towards the center of this animation so that it kind of pops onto the screen, looks a little bit better. And then hit this toggle switches modes button add some motion blur to this text box layer and then en enable that text that motion blur up here. All right, so now we have our text popping on. That's very cool. We can make it even a little bit slower by dragging out this second keyframe. Now let's just render it out. And that's pretty darn cool. Okay, so now we want to add our logo to this cool lower third. So I'm going to take the Video School Online lower third, or logo, excuse me, just talking about lower third so much. And I'm actually going to change the color of this, so I'm going to add a hue saturation effect to it because I don't want it to be a gray background. I'm going to have to colorize it, increase the saturation, increase the lightness, and we'll do something like a nice green. 
Okay, so now we have our logo on the screen, but we want to make it appear as this red bar is going over it. So we're gonna do the same thing as we did with the track mat for the text. I'm going to create a shape and just sort of cover up the logo. So I'm just going to create a shape. It might be easier if I change this to yellow right now or green. And basically just go like this. Put it over your shape. Okay, so now if I hit that toggle switches modes and change the video school online t icon or whatever icon you're using, track mat option from none to alpha mat shape layer two. Again, the icon or logo only appears where the shape layer is. So if I move this shape layer around, you can see that I can kind of animate it to appear on the screen, moving from left to right. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So go to right before where this red bar goes, starts to go behind the logo. So about frame four. Now put the shape layer that we just created to the very right of that red bar. Press P to bring up your position, hit that keyframe button right there, the icon next to position. Now go forward frame by frame and you can do that by pressing command right arrow on your keyboard or control right arrow if you're using Windows. And then move the shape over to the right to meet up with that red bar again. Now command right arrow one more time. Make sure you have the right layer selected, shape layer two. Move to the right until it meets up with that red bar. Shift command right arrow one more time. And just keep doing this until the shape layer goes past the entire logo. So something like that. So now our logo appears as if the red bar was wiping it onto the screen. So there you have it. We have our entire composition right here. And it wasn't too bad. I think. I, and I hope that this tutorial was worth the thirteen dollars of your of your time, uh, or the twelve minutes of your time, or however long this took, instead of paying the thirteen dollars on VideoHive.net. And this way, you get to learn, become a better motion graphics artist, and get a free modern lower third out of it. Okay, so again, as I promised, you can download this link. Uh, download the project by going to videoschoolonline.com slash center lower third and I'll put that up on the screen so just check it out free lower third to, uh, template you can find other lower thirds on videoschoolonline.com and of course other free premium courses and paid premium courses if you want to dive even deeper into After Effects or many other topics. So thanks for watching. Thanks again, Jesse, for asking for this tutorial. I hope others have found it worthwhile. And everyone else, uh, we'll see you in another video. Bye.